the orphanages and taken away. We don't have any special record. I mean, for example, this individual Armenian who are still has been seen looking for his brother was taken away three years old, couldn't find, and they were taken and killed in a way. Yeah. The second one is um, about, you mentioned some telegrams and that they were specifically towards the end would say to be destroyed right after they're put in practice or something. So if, I mean, were they or were they not? And if they were, how do we know they're there? So did they basically... Very simple, of course. Are, <coughs> these people were not very smart. I mean, what, what, what were they doing? This is an order going from central government to provinces, mm -hmm. it is possible that they destroyed this telegram in the province. How it works is following way. Mm -hmm. Talat. I, sorry. I, sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. They, as a minister, there are different drafts actually in the telegrams also. First draft, second draft, third draft. We know that because in, there are some telegrams, the lines were uh, taken out or uh, covered and so on. After they finished there, they gave to the uh, guy who sent this telegram. And he turns this text that we are reading into numbers, ciphers, and were sent to the province. And there is an officer there. This is how we know from Andonian documents, because Naim Bey gave Andonian some of these cipher telegrams. And on the other side, when the officer said that he, he got these numbers, and according to his uh, cipher he quotes, he turns into a normal text with his own handwriting and then gives to the governor. And governors read and then say, turn it off. So in central government, they kept the record, but in the provinces, I mean, we don't know about the documents in the provinces, nothing at all. And other important thing that we don't know at all is the answer to these telegrams. They are, he's asking, Talak was asking on the population numbers, for example, almost weekly basis. And this is what we are asking. Where are they? Or the, uh, the records of the properties. You know, for each individual Armenians, they kept two different records. One is for the local province, the other for the central government. Two copies. Where are they? Nobody knows. And I'm sure that they are still somewhere because they are very, I mean, property issue is very serious one. Okay, very change of subject. Nobody talked about the very beginning of your talk, which is pretty fascinating to me, just in terms of what's happening in your field, in the genocide field, and what social scientists are discovering and talking. And you mentioned that there may be a movement away from the narrow description of the genocide and trying to fit it into was it that, and then giving it this label, which we all know is part of this whole, you know, political situation between Turkey and U.S. and Armenia and everything else. So, I mean, in a way, I wonder if the fact that maybe now experts like yourself are finding ways of describing the horrendous things that have happened in another way, I mean, does that ever... Would that ever be used so that um, you know we don't have to deal with a denialist policy or you know Turkey trying to um, interpret certain things in a certain way? Um, it, it, is that bringing us further as far as what we would like to hear? So um, you know, and I'll ask you another way. I've been in meetings where there will be you know, um, diplomatic type people, people who are close to, you know, foreign ministries or something, and what they will say, you know, everything that you can read in the convention of 1948, um, you know, you can talk to people in the government and they'll be, oh yes, X, Y, Z, yeah, uh, uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah, these horrible things, um, except that word. So what I'm asking is, if there is a way to get to a place where it's not the word, what every single horrible atrocity you can do to a population of people, are we going to get somewhere better? I mean, the trend would be just in the opposite direction that these diplomats expect. That uh, the term genocide now most widely used then in this limited way, 
And there is a moral aspect of that issue also, as you know, this is not only a problem of the scholarship, this is a part of a political fight. This is, this is the acknowledgement of a historic wrongdoing. So there is a very strong moral dimension of the, in the term genocide, more than its own meaning and so on. So calling something as a genocide is a very important for the victim people, for example. We know from a lot of different experiences, they really want their cases be called genocide because the term has a certain psychological power, the magic there. So I don't think that our approach, the approach of the new scholarship, so going a little bit looser with this term genocide would help denialers so much. My understanding is just the opposite, because more we deal with that issue, we end up with the term, actually, you know, this is destruction of a group of people. And we want you to acknowledge this. I mean, I think if Turkish government also today stands up and says, yes, it was a destruction of a people, it was an annihilation of a people, nobody would ask more about the term, maybe. It would be a wonderful beginning to use this destruction. So for us, it's important to understand really this process of destruction. We want to know this in detail, so we don't stick in the term, because our problem is, the other central question is how we can prevent this kind of mass crimes in human history, and we know that the denialism is one of the problems in that process. So. I want to thank you for an extremely interesting, and detailed, rich, Talk. Thank you to everyone here. I had resolved earlier that I wasn't going to say anything about the weather, but uh, I know it's not a great night, so thank you for, for coming out. And I'm always giving Connor a hard time because I'm sending him things to, to read, and then he sends me things to read. So we have a few more things for you oh, to you. read. Uh, only wow, happy. it's... Oh. Only happy when I'm making more work for Tanner. So, uh, thank you all. There are refreshments. The bookstore is open, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.